Uh, good morning. Today is uh, June 30th, Wednesday, 2021. This is Math K3, Chapter 13. And I think it's Lecture 5. And I'm going to continue the inference function, the non homogeneous term on the right hand side of the differential equation, is an impulse function. And last time I think I had taken a difference of two step functions, u5 minus u20, I think, that's what we had done. So that was a discontinuous function on the right hand side, and today, the impulse function I'm going to be using as the Dirac delta function, which we already, which we have already discussed. And we know that the Laplace transform of delta function, Dirac delta function, delta t minus a equal to e to the power minus p a. So this delta function, it kicks in at t equal to a. There is a delay of a. <coughs> And this is just for information, you know, if there is no delay if a equal to zero, then this is equal to one. So we have this differential equation. This is exactly the same differential equation that I used in my past lecture. Two y double prime plus y prime plus two y. This side, the left hand side was the same in my last lecture. Only the right hand side, I changed it with a delta function, with a Dirac delta function, which is delta t minus phi. So this guy is going to kick in at t equals to phi. If t is the time, then in five seconds, you know, it's going to go zoop like that. And the initial conditions I have taken the same at last y0 equal to 0 and y prime 0 equal to 0. <coughs> So if it's a spring, then at time t is equal to zero, I'm not giving any displacement, and I'm not imparting any velocity to the initial kinetic energy. There's no kinetic energy imparted, you know, because this is zero. <clears throat> All right. So it's basically, So basically, what I'm doing is that at t equal to phi, I'm imparting a forcing function, a delta function over here, and looking at the response of this differential equation with respect to this forcing function. So if I take the Laplace transform on this side, again, it's the same thing as before. 2p squared plus p plus 2, yp equals 2, and the Laplace transform of this is e to minus 5p because a is 5 over here. And I can easily calculate my yp. yp is going to be e to the minus 5p divided by 2p squared plus p plus 2. And I can factor, just like before, I can factor out my 2 over here. And I can write it as e to power minus p, 5p divided by 2, 1 over p squared plus half p plus 1. Now I'm going to do exactly the same thing because I want this guy in a recognizable form. So I have here e to the power minus 5p divided by 2. And I'm going to make it a whole square, so that is a p squared. And twice p divided by 4, because that's your half p. So that's my a plus b, a, and this is my b term, a plus b whole square term. That's my b, so that will be a b squared I'm going to add 1 over 4 squared. Because I added this, I'm going to subtract 1 over 4 squared, and plus 1 is already here. So this becomes your uh, p plus 1 by 4 whole square, and if you solve this, that's a 15 by 16 over here. So that's my fp basically. So I have something like e to the minus p multiplied by some kind of an fp. So whenever I see that e to the minus p and fp, I know that I'm going to apply this kind of formula. 
you know, because ultimately I have to apply inverse, so I want to find out the inverse to the Laplace form of this in order to find a function of t. Right now, this is the Laplace transform formula. So, I see e to the minus p and then some kind of f p over here. And I know from uh, one of the theorems that we have done that if you have e to the minus c p, f p, then it's the class transform, it is the step function at c, and c over here is my, my is your phi, you know. So that's easy. I can I can just put my for this thing I can simply put my step function u phi t. Now I have this fp fp over here, and I, I want ft minus c, and c is a phi. So to find ft minus c, first of all, I will have to find ft. That means I will have to find the inverse transform of fp, and then change to, by finding the inverse transform of fp, I'm going to get ft, and because I want f t minus c, c is your phi, I'm going to replace in ft t uh, by t minus phi, or t minus c, you know. So that is the strategy. So let me find out first of all the inverse transform of this so that I can get my ft minus c, you know. So that's my fp. So basically I want small ft out of this guy. So I've taken this half with it and basically I want the inverse transform of this thing, half I can take it out of this guy. And I look at my tables, you know, and there's nothing like this. Uh, I know it should look something like this. If, I, if it looks like this, then I know that my Laplace transform, inverse Laplace transform is this. You know. So I want to convert this thing into this kind of form. There is B squared here, there is B over here. So my B is basically B, okay. So B I have, B is your square root 15 by 16. I just want B over here. So I multiply, I multiply by B, which is a 15 by, B is a square root 15 by 16, and I divide by the same thing, you know. So that is your one. And I leave this guy 15 by 16 over here and pull this guy out. So square root of 16 is 4, and this is 2, so that is a 2 divided by square root of 15. And the pass transform of this thing over here. So you have square root of 15 by 16 divided by p squared plus 4 plus 15 by 16. You know. Now I can recognize that this is this, you know. The pass transform of this is going to be e to the power at multiplied by sine bt, where b where b in this case is your square root 15 by 16, and a is going to be minus 1 by 4, because I can write it as what am I doing? That's better. Sorry about that. All right. So the Laplace transform of this. So what I've done is uh, I've just you know just taking the Laplace transform of this using this formula. So I have e bar e bar a t, and as I said, a is your minus one by four. And 2 by 15, square root 15 is already there, so it is e to the minus t by 4. And sine bt, b is your square root 15 by 4t. So that's my ft. But to fit into this thing, I want ft minus c, and c is of this phi over here. Because we are using this formula. c is phi, so, so f, ft minus c, is just, I'm going to replace t by t minus 5. So that's a 2 divided by square root of 15. e to the power minus, t is your t minus 5 divided by 4, 
and sine 15 by 4 squared 15 by 4 t minus 5. And there has to be a t somewhere there. No, t is the regular. Sorry. So this is what I have. So I know what is my ft minus c. All I have to do is just multiply by the step function. I hope that is clear to you. So I have this guy. This guy I have already calculated this much. So that's what my ft minus 5 is, which is 2 over square root 15, and then e to the power minus, e to the power minus uh, 1 by 4, t minus 5, sky, sine square root 15 by 4, t minus 5. And I simply multiply this guy. I simply multiply this guy by this u5, the step function here. So I can also write, so this, because this step function is going to kick in at 5, and before 5, 5, it is t equal to 5, it is 0. So I can also write it as yt equal to 0 from t less than 5, and greater than or equal to 5, it's going to be simply this function multiplied by 2 by square root of 15. So that's how you calculate um, the response when your forcing function is a delta function, that's what I've shown over here. It's pretty straightforward, I think. And I plotted this, this equation I plotted over here. This is my y, this is a t. So from 0 to t, 0 to 5, 0 to 5, you know, this y is 0. There's no response. Because there are no initial condition in this time. And the forcing function, you know, delta, it just kicks in at t equal to 5. So it kicks, kicks in and, you know, it just goes very high. And, you know, there is a damping associated over here. There is some damping over here in this. And uh, it's a sinusoidal curve multiplied by a decaying exponential. So that's how it looks like. All right, thank you much, uh, very much. Uh, this is uh, the end of the class transform. And next, I believe, it will be your um, Fourier series or partial differential equation. Thank you.